Well, yeah. Jason, this is the Mackie DL32R, latest mm. in the series of iThingy devices from the company. Mm. Let's talk about the specs to start with. Okay, well, you've got a digital mixer here. You've got uh, 24 XLR mic pre's on the front. You've got eight TRS combo jacks, line in mic pre's. You are mixing to 14 auxes, six groups, uh, six matrix, and stereo left, right, with all of the connectors on the front. And all of the faders on the nowhere. Yeah, that's the that's the really big jump. That's it. That's yeah. that's everything. Where are our faders, Jimmy? The faders are in this thing. This is the master fader. This app. is the master fader app, which you know is a pretty cool app, and I think is generally fairly easy to get around. Mm. Um, but you are at the end of the day, ultimately now reliant. You notice I've got a, a very old Linksys mm. WRT fifty four G strapped to the top of this. And I like that they give you a Velcro thing to mm -hmm. attach your cho chosen wireless access point, um, which is good because it means if you need to go to wireless N or whatever the next mm -hmm. revision of the thing is, you can. Um, but at the end of the day, you're reliant on no wires. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about that? Well, it's, you know, it's sort of divided opinion uh, out there in the market. Uh, some people are very, very comfortable with it and have been successfully mixing gigs for ages. And not just method. young blokes either? No, no, no. There's some very seasoned engineers yeah. with many years of experience who are quite happy to do it and in fact, you know, thankful of the, uh, of the flexibility it gives mm. you and the ability to walk the room, ability to well, sit at the bar if you like. Um, and you know, it's it's been rock solid. People have been successfully mixing like this. I just think that there is going to be some cultural hesitance out in the market of people who just don't quite, you know, aren't ready to give up their faders, mm. aren't ready to give up what they feel is the reassurance of a physical control or a wire, yeah. or even a wired connection. I think I think it's sort of we're at the point now where um, this will be the kind of thing that mm. many people will encounter as their first piece of professional audio gear. Oh, and absolutely, that's cool. absolutely, and and. I think it sort of it's, it it sort of straddles that like you know pro am kind of you know mm. you could use this down at the pub to yeah. to do the band and a couple of sends of wedges and stuff, or you could use it for a little corporate show where mm. there wasn't maybe enough space for a mix position or whatever, mm. um, and and it does some really cool stuff. But for me, the, I I've still got that whole wireless hesitancy thing, and um, I reckon you're going to want to have rock solid wireless. Yep. So my, my, my tip on this is use the thing by all means, but if, you, if you're going to strap a really cheap wireless access point to it, expect mm. to have problems. Yeah, look, the market's going to have to educate itself on good wireless technique, good mm. wireless uh, equipment, and how to navigate what could be a sometimes hostile Wi-Fi wi environment. Yeah. and Because that's, that's where these things live or die, and that's probably the bit of knowledge that's missing from the, from the pro audio industry. Yeah, and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound a bit naff, but I, I've had actually, on iThings, I've mm. found that the, the Apple Wi-Fi stuff seems to work pretty mm. well, yeah. um, whereas not everything else does. Mm. Uh, I don't know if that's the case across Android and so on, but yeah. that's not relevant because there is no Android control no, for this. No, it's just iOS only at the moment, up to 10 iOS devices. Look, for, for what you get, you basically you add, you know, you add your mics to this, you add some powered speakers, and you've got an incredibly it's powerful system, <laughs> add, and for not much money. I mean, compared to what something with this capability would have cost just a few years ago, it's amazing. Plus, add to that, you've got um, via USB, you can currently record uh, 24 tracks direct to hard disk, but they're going to upgrade that to 32. There's another USB connection uh, where you can go straight to a DAW. Uh, it's a fairly standard feature set on these things. I mean, it's just amazingly powerful, incredibly portable. God, and can you imagine lifting like an analog console yeah. that did all the stuff this does? It's three rack units for Pete's sake. Yeah, look, I, I think as far it's as ridiculous. A, as far as a as a cultural paradigm shift that engineers who may or may not feel comfortable with it. Everybody's just going to have to get over it because these things are going to be yeah, every, everywhere. Yeah, I agree. And look, I, I think this, you know, you can fold your antennas down. Mm. You can stick it into a sleeve and you can take it out, you know, and, and there, that's, that's your 32 channel console now and mm. all your outboard and all your effects. And, well, no, it's in the box. Yep.